Hello everyone, welcome to the class. Uh, today we are going to see about enzymes. So if we talk about enzymes, enzymes can be defined as a biological polymer that catalyzes a biochemical reaction. Before that, let me tell you, enzymes are proteinaceous in nature. Proteinaceous nature means what? They are made up of proteins, right? And they, what, what is the uh, basic, uh, uh, you know, function of enzyme is that they catalyze the reaction. What do you mean by catalyze? Catalyze means they increases the speed of the reaction. Enzyme, they catalyze the reaction, right? Enzyme catalyzes all aspects of cell metabolism. They catalyze the, uh, they catalyze or you can say they helps in the digestion of food in which large nutrient molecules are converted into smaller molecules, right? So basically how enzymes do this? Enzymes, suppose let me explain you with the help of an example. If this is a reaction A plus B, it, it gets converted to C plus D. Now, if this reaction takes place normally without enzyme, if this reaction takes place without enzyme, say it takes, it takes normally 10 hours. But in the presence of enzyme, in the presence of enzyme, it takes 20 minutes. So this is how enzyme work. You can say the time interval is reduced, right? So it speed up the reaction. That is why we call this as a catalyst. That is why we call enzyme as catalyst because they speed up the reaction. They do not take part into the reaction but speed up the reaction so how they do that we will see that this in our upcoming video in mechanism of enzyme now in this class we will be dealing with the basics of enzymes right okay so if there are many diseases which are related to the uh, human uh, there are many human diseases which are related to the deficiency of a particular enzyme if one or more enzymes are missing if one or more enzymes are missing then it may cause certain diseases so two diseases are your albinism and phenylketonuria already we have seen phenyl phenylketonuria in our genetic disorder part right and in case of albinism what will happen here there is an absence of one enzyme as a result of which the skin melanin gets will not get produced, right? So what will happen? The person suffers from a discolor on the skin tone, right? So that is what we call albinism. So uh, this is enzyme structure. This is a structure of enzyme, you can see. So this enzyme structure if you see we can call it it is a proteinaceous in nature or we can call it it is made up of sequence of amino acids that's it right enzymes are linear chain of amino acids which give rise to a trinity structure last slide we have seen this the sequence of amino acids specifies the structure which in turn catalyzes the activity of the enzyme. Okay, fine. So, if this is a sequence of amino acid, right? This is one sequence of amino acid. So, this is another sequence of amino acid, right? So, this sequence of amino acids specifies the structure of the enzyme. And if the, according to different structure, what will happen? The catalytic activities get slightly changed. So this sequence of amino acids, you can say, identify the structure and in turns, they can identify the catalytic activity of, identify the catalytic activity of enzyme, right? Upon heating, enzyme structures denatured, resulting in a loss of enzyme activity that typically is associated with temperature. So, if you heat the enzyme, if you heat the enzyme, what will happen? We know that enzyme is made up of protein. If we heat the protein, what will happen? It will get denatured, right? As enzymes are made up of protein, so if we heat it, the enzyme gets denatured, right? Next. Enzyme classification. If we classify enzyme, it is basically uh, divided into six classes. 
oxidoreductase, transferases, hydrolases, lyases, isomerases, ligases. So there is one code for this enzyme and the code is your ethylyl. So what is ethylyl? O stands for oxidoreductase, T stands for transferase, H stands for hydrolases, L stands for lyases, I stands for isomerases and L stands for ligases. So what is the function? We will see function. Function is oxidoreductase, it catalyzes, you can see oxidoreductase, that means it helps in oxidation reduction reaction, right? From the name itself, you can see oxidoreductase, so it catalyzes only those reactions which are involved in the oxidation and reduction process, right? Next, transferase reaction, transferase, transferase, that means it, it transfers something, so it catalyzes the transfer of functional group, right? Hydrolases, hydrolases if you say hydrolases that means something react, uh, related to hydrolysis reaction, right? Catalyze hydrolysis reaction. Lyases, lyases helps, lyases means breaking. So it basically catalyzes the group elimination reaction and form double bond. Suppose this is, uh, you can say this is present. So what it will do, it will break the bone between this two and it leads to the formation of double bone. And elimination of other part right so that is what we call lyases isomerases they catalyze the isomerization reaction that means formula remains same structural formula same only structure differs only structure differs this is what they do isomerases and if we talk about ligases ligases basically helps in attachment right by using ATP. Clear everyone? Right? So this is what we have seen the classification of enzyme. Coming to cofactors. So what is cofactors? Cofactors are non-proteinaceous nature that associate with enzyme. Okay. If we talk about enzyme. Enzymes are basically what proteinaceous in nature. But enzyme can, enzyme can be a combination of both proteinaceous part and non-proteinaceous part, right? And non-proteinaceous part. So proteinaceous part, we called it what? This proteinaceous part, we called it apoenzyme. Apoenzymes. And this non-proteinaceous part, it is basically divided into three parts. That means... If it is inorganic, it can be non-proteinaceous part can be inorganic, can be organic, can be metal, right? And you can write one more part. It can be tightly bound with enzyme, tightly bound with proteinaceous part, right? So accordingly, we will name it if it is inorganic part. If this is inorganic part, we call it what? Inorganic, we call it cofactor. Cofactor. For inorganic part, we call it cofactor. For organic part, we call it coenzymes. For organic part, we call it coenzymes. Right? And if it is tightly attached, if it is tightly attached with a proteinaceous part, we call it what for tightly attachment? We call it prosthetic group. We call it prosthetic group. Right? And it can be a metal, zinc, iron. Right? So that is what I have explained in this slide. A cofactor is essential for the functioning of an enzyme. So a coenzyme without a cofactor is called apoenzyme. This part. An enzyme and its cofactor together. This together combination we call it holoenzyme. I will show you it, it in the next slide. So these are the prosthetic group. That means they are these are the cofactors tightly bound to an enzyme all the times. Right? Coenzyme is bind to enzyme only during the time of catalysis. Otherwise, it remains separated from the enzyme. If we talk about prosthetic, if this is an enzyme, say this is an enzyme. Right? So, if we talk about prostatic group, what will happen? This remain tightly attached with the prostatic group. That means it, it is tightly attached with the enzyme. Right? 
and in case of coenzyme what will happen the enzyme remains separated from the uh, you know from the coenzyme but it gets attached it gets attached only during the catalysis reaction only during the catalysis reaction right third methyl ion methyl ion is also needed sometimes to activate the to activate the enzyme right so they why we need enzyme they helps in beverage productions food products drug actions right let me tell you the classification part so we have seen that enzyme is basically what it it is proteinaceous in nature and it is composed of both proteinaceous and non proteinaceous part right and this combination we call it what this combination we call it holo enzyme this entire combination this proteinaceous and non proteinaceous entire combination we call it holo enzyme right or let me write it like this this proteinaceous and non proteinaceous part we call it what we call it holo enzyme both proteinaceous and non proteinaceous part right so if you see proteinaceous part we call it proteinaceous part can be called as apo enzymes right and non proteinaceous part can be organic can be inorganic right it can be metal and it can be tightly this is not required tightly bound so we call it prostatic group right if it is organic we call it coenzyme coenzyme right and if it is inorganic we call it cofactor right for metal ion the example let me give you the example for a metal ion for metal ion example will be your zinc copper cobalt these are the example right and if 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 non proteinaceous part let me write it here if if what if non proteinaceous part gets tightly tightly attached to enzyme then we call this what we call this part then those non if non if non proteinaceous part is tightly attached to enzyme then non proteinaceous part is known as then non proteinaceous part is known as what it is known as what yes it is known as prostatic group right so these are the basic you can say what these are the basic part of enzyme you can get question uh, the proteinaceous part of enzyme is known as in one to marks question right so this is enzyme next we have seen the classification of enzymes classification of enzymes if we talk about the classification of enzymes i have given you one code that is oath lil right here o stands for oxido reductases right t stands for transferases h stands for hydrolysis 
L stands for lyases. I stands for isomerase. L stands for ligases, right? So, what are the functions? Oxidoreductase helps in oxidation or catalyzes oxidation and reduction reaction. Transferases transfer transfer functional group. Hydrolyzes it helps in hydrolysis reaction. Catalyzes the hydrolytic reaction. Lyases helps in uh, breaking of the elimination of the functional group and forms double bond. Isomerases structural rearrangement. Structural rearrangement. Ligases you can call it attachment. Helps in attachment but needs ATP. And here lyases elimination Of, of a group and formation of double bond and formation of double bond right so that was the, that this is the quick summary of the class next class we will be dealing with the mechanism next class we will be dealing with mechanism of enzymes next class right so we will be doing next class the mechanism of enzymes fine thank you so much students for watching this session if you have any doubts please let me know thank you bye bye take care everyone